In this section of video lectures, we'll look at the traditional spaces in a theater building and see the purposes that they serve. We'll also be looking at the concept of theater performance space and learn how the space a theater occupies determines how a play will be staged. So we're now getting down to the nuts and bolts of the craft of theater. Before we step into the world of theater staging, this first unit will take a look at the spaces that make up a traditional theater. We'll look at the purposes they serve. This will give us a better understanding of the inner workings of the world of theater presentation. When we consider the theater as a facility, we typically divide it up into four separate spaces that work together to serve a play performance. These four spaces are the stage, the house, backstage, and front of house. The stage is easily enough to find as the location where the dramatic action of the play is performed. It is typically raised to serve as a platform for the performance. This is not necessarily always the case. Sometimes the stage can be on a floor level. In this case, the floor can also serve as a design element of the play production. If there is a setting, it is placed on the stage and situated in such a way as to accommodate the production sight lines. That is, all of the elements are placed in view of every audience member. How plays are staged depends on the physical arrangement between the stage and the second important space in a theater facility, the house. We will be looking more specifically at the theories and practices of using the stage when we cover the art of directing later in the semester. The house is the term we use to describe the space that is occupied by the audience or patrons during the action of the play. The house in most traditional theaters is raked, that is to say, that the seats move up at a slant to improve the sight lines between every audience member and the stage. If the house is raked, each successive row in the house is raised a little higher than the row in front of it. That way, you can watch the action of the play while looking over the head of the patron sitting in front of you. Although lighting and sound are considered backstage activities, most theaters find the light and sound control booth situated at the rear of the house. This is in order so that the light and soundboard operators may view the action of a play from the best vantage point so that they may execute their cues efficiently. The space that is designed to support the dramatic action that takes place on the stage is referred to as the backstage area. The backstage is where additional settings may be stored. This is also the place where the actors wait as they prepare to make their entrances. Other accommodations in the backstage space include the dressing rooms, the scene shop, and the costume shop. The backstage can be a simple storage area, or it can include much of the scenery and technology that help to create the illusion of reality that takes place on the stage. In a traditional theater, the spaces that are behind and off to either side of the stage are referred to as the wings. The space directly above the stage space and out of the view or sight lines of the audience is referred to as the loft or fly loft. The hemp house, or pin rail as it's sometimes referred, is a system of ropes that are used to fly scenery or curtains in and out of the fly loft. We will be considering many of the techniques used in the backstage space when we cover scenic design. The fourth space in the theater is referred to as the front of house. The front of house space is the area that accommodates the patrons who have come to view the play before the action begins and during the intermission. The front of house is where such accommodations as the lobby, box office, and concessions take place. It is here where the tone of the evening is set as everyone from the box office manager to the usher interact with audience members. Many theaters are famous for the elaborate nature of their front of house.
while others are intentionally rustic in order to set a different tone. So in summary, the four spaces in a traditional theater are the stage, the space where the dramatic action takes place, the house, the space that the audience occupies during the performance of the dramatic action, the backstage, the space that supports the actors and the action on the stage, and the front of house, the space that accommodates the patrons or audience members before the play and during the intermission. Naturally, the size and functionality of our four spaces vary from theater to theater. But in order to function effectively in a theater, one must be aware of each of these spaces and how they serve the theater facility. In the following units, we will take a look at three physical performance spaces in the theater and consider the different conventions that are used to stage a play in each of these different spaces. These spaces are called the proscenium arch, the thrust, and the arena. But before we get into that, it's time for you to click on to the task for this unit and answer the questions provided for you there.